Okay, guys. So um, let's let's go ahead and get started. So I just want to do a couple more examples. What what we what unit seven is all about is rational expressions. That's when you have a polynomial over a polynomial. Um, our first day we talked about reducing them, multiplying, dividing. Our second day, which we're finishing right now, is adding and subtracting them. And to do that, you need a common denominator. Okay. So now in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the sides to be, the, the bottoms to be the same. Okay, so right now, they, this one has an x minus 3, this one has an x minus 5. So to get them to match, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this side by x minus 5. And whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. And now to get this side to match the side on the left, I need to put a, an x minus 3 over here. Okay, now they both have the same denominator, x minus 5 times x minus 3. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do after you match those denominators is, well, is you're going to multiply. So like here, for instance, we can distribute. That would give me 6x minus 18. Over here... How would I multiply? Box method. Uh, what's that going to be? It's going to be positive 2, negative 5, is negative 3x minus 10. So I'm not going to show my work for that, but I will write a little note. And I'm going to encourage you guys to do the same. Just put like box multiplication there. Whereas over here, we, we just distributed, right? Just so we know what we did. <laughs> So now that we got them to have the same denominator, we're good to we're good to start combining these fractions together. Okay, so I'm going to do x squared minus three x minus ten is going to be added to that top over there, all over one common denominator. And all we have left to do is go ahead and combine our like terms. So um, x squared doesn't have anything to combine with, so I'll just rewrite that as is. Uh, negative 3x and positive 6x makes 3x, and then negative 10 and negative 18 make negative 28. Sure. So just so you guys know, I'm, I'm going to put here... Reduce in question marks. So in order to reduce, what you would have to do is factor the top and see if anything crosses off. Uh, now, I will say that usually nothing, they very rarely reduce at this point. Um, the kinds where you have binomials in the bottom and you have to match them and stuff, the top ends up being so convoluted and strange you can't factor it anyway. But, but in this case, I, I'm kind of wondering here. Um, now, let, let's, let's, I, I'm wondering if this will factor. Let's see. You said x plus 7? 7 and x minus 4. Okay, so it actually does factor. That's unique, right? But will any of these cancel anything on the bottom? No. So we're going to leave it. But a lot of times, you just won't have to reduce, just so you know. Okay, so let's move on to a guided practice here, eh? Okay. Let's do it. So, Demir. Okay, I mean, I didn't even get the but that Demir. I have to slow down a little bit. Um, what would you do first? I like the way you think, sir. Totally agree. How's about Kalen? What say you? Yeah. 
good. I like to put all my binomials in parentheses. I think I mentioned that last week sometime, or two weeks ago. Dylan Smith, what would you have me do next? Uh, combine my R plus two and the R plus two. Oh, you mean, yeah, so how would I do that? You would multiply the six and the R plus two, so it would be six R plus two. Great, so we're going to distribute. Yeah, that's, what do. that's the word. So it's going to be six R plus 12. Uh, how's about Ricardo? What would you have me do next? Box method. Box method. Why don't you guys go ahead and do your box real quick. I'll wait for you. <laughs> Can I go? Me? Me? Right here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I got off with. Uh huh. Off. What? Minus 12. Off. Minus Good. Okay. Um, let me ask Robert. Robert, what would you have me do next? You're right. So we're gonna we're gonna combine the tops. But before we do that, does somebody remember what we need to do in this case? We need uh, combine terms. I heard. One fraction. I think you're right, and I heard someone back there say it. When you're subtracting, you need to distribute the negative. So I'm gonna show all my work here, but you know you don't have to show this much detail necessarily. But first of all, like like Robert said, we combine it, right? Into one fraction. And then we're going to distribute that negative because you are subtracting that entire polynomial. And so now it's minus r squared plus 4r plus 5. And then we go ahead and combine our like terms. So I like to put my larger powers in the front. And then 6r goes with 4r to make 10r. 12 and 5 make 17. And I am fairly certain that this is not going to factor. Um, so do you guys remember, like, if you were to FOIL this out, what would the last, like if you were to multiply these two things together, what would the last number be? No? The last number would be 10. Negative 10, right? Because it's going to be one of these, right? So here's the thing. If one of these divide into here, then this last number should be able to be divided by one of these. Can 17 be divided by 5? Yeah. Or 2? No. So here's the thing. Even if the top did factor, it wouldn't matter because n neither one of those are going to end up being its factor, so nothing's going to reduce. So we're just going to leave it like this, okay? Um, but like I said, very rarely do you have to reduce anyway, but I'll, I'll keep mentioning it. Um, so there's that. Um, I, want to, I want to do one more example with you guys, then I'll let you guys practice one, and we'll call it a day. Okay, pretty short lesson today. So let's go ahead and write down example two. Oh, five, yeah, sorry. Example five. You are. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Sometimes. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. These ones are slightly easy enough for me to pull it off. All right, there you go. Escríbalo, por favor. Sure, let me pause. Now, I don't want you guys to start. I don't want to just match these bottoms right now. Like, I don't want to multiply this side by x squared minus 3x plus 2. Anybody? Want to take a guess why I would want to do that? 
Well. It's big. That, that's a lot. Okay. Same thing with regular fractions. Like whenever you're combining your fractions, you don't always multiply the bottoms by each other, right? You, you try to find the lowest common denominator. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor these, and then I'm going to try to match the pieces, okay? So here's, here's what I mean by that. So how, how do you know when to do this, by the way? Because when you look at it, if you can factor the bottom, then you probably should. So check it out. What's this? What's this one factor into? Yeah, because it's plus one, x plus one. Right? Not the difference of squares. Good. Now over there, this will factor, and it's got three terms. How do you factor something with three terms? Box. I'm going to show my work on the side here. So x squared goes here, two goes here. We're looking for two things that multiply to make x, two things that multiply together to make two. We complete our box. And then at the end, these two numbers should add up to make what? Three. Negative 3, right? So they, both need to be negative. so they both need to be negative. And there you have it. So we have x minus 2 and x minus 1. So step 1, then, is factor. So if you can, factor. I didn't do that in the last problems I gave you. Because if you want to look back at those problems really quick, look at the starting problem. Could you factor that anyway? Couldn't. So you just start matching. But in this case, if you can factor the bottoms, you probably should. That way, you don't need to put the whole denominator on each side. What you can do is just match the pieces that are off. So for instance, what is this side missing? Uh, uh, x minus that side's missing an x minus 2. So let's give it an x minus 2. Nice. I'm not going to put everything over here, just the x minus 2, because it already has an x minus 1, right? You got it. That way we end up with the least common denominator, and we don't end up with a giant polynomial that needs to be reduced at the end. Okay, after that, guys, there's really nothing new. The problem is all the same. So I just want to make sure you guys got it from here. So for this type of problem, we look at this and realize, oh, these can be factored. So let's factor it first, and then we'll match. Okay? That's about as bad as it gets. So here we go. Distribute. So from here to here is distribute. Over here, we got another box problem. It's a pirate story. You're trying to find where X is. X part of his style. I tried. I tried. I'm reading Treasure Island right now. That's why it's in my brain. Yeah, it's a pretty cool story. I've enjoyed it. All right. So um, in this case, we're going to combine the tops. Now, I don't need to distribute any negatives this time because we're adding. So 6x can be put with 5x to make 11x. Negative 12 and 4 can go together to make negative 8. And then that x squared, I'm going to put that in the front. And once again, um, you can check to see if it's factorable, but I'm fairly certain that it will not be. Um, yeah, there's no way you're going to get two things that multiply together to make 8 and add up to 11. So it's not even factorable. So that's how you combine rational expressions when they have unlike denominators. So I'll throw one practice problem at you guys, and that'll close us out for the day. We're wrapping up early today. Like I said, we're just finishing what I started last Friday with y'all. All right. Here we go. Ready? All right. 6x over. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay. I think this will work. You sure about that, Bailey? All right. Go for it. I did. The right side here is a GCF. The left side was a difference of squares. So I factored those. And now we would try to match these denominators. So over here on the left side, this side has a 2x minus 1 and a 2x plus 1. The right side has 3x and 2x plus 1. So this side is missing the 3x. It needs a 3x on the top and bottom. This side over here is missing the 2x minus 1. Okay. So simplifying this, we get 18x squared on the top here. Um, minus, now we have to box this out. Um, uh, and by boxing that out, we get 2x squared minus 1x minus 1. No, plus 1x. So I saw a couple of people getting 3 in the middle here, but it should have been a positive 1, so I want to double check your box on that. But anyway, from here, you're going to distribute the negative. So this becomes a minus, this becomes a minus, this becomes a plus. 18x squared, take away 2x squared is 16x squared. And the rest of these just come down the way that they are. And at this point, Safe to say, we're probably done. I doubt 2x squared goes into that. I'll check. No, it don't. How do you know? I doubt. No, it doesn't factor. All right, so we're good. All right, guys, that's the end of it.